Okay, up till now we've talked about uh, electric field and electric potential, but we haven't actually talked about the interaction between uh, multiple charges, which is the electric force. So you've taken courses in chemistry and probably had some physics courses where you talked about uh, the interaction between two charges. So here I have a plus charge um, that is of size Q1 and another plus charge which is of size Q2. So the way we're going to understand this electric force is through the thing which mediates it, which is the electric field. So at the location of charge 2, uh, Q1 produces an electric field E1. Um, it points directly away from Q1. Um, at the location of Q1, uh, Q2 produces an electric field. We'll draw it slightly differently because the charges are um, of different size. So in this case, Q2 is smaller than Q1. Uh, it produces an electric field that points directly away from Q2. Um, and it is at the location of the charge Q1. Now when we go and we look at how these charges interact and the pushes and pulls that are associated with it, it turns out that the product of the charge and, its elect and the electric field that is external to that charge is what gives you the force that acts on that charge. So if I want to know about the force um, by charge uh, 2 on charge 1, that is the push that charge 2 applies to charge 1, um, we're going to write that this way, 2 on 1 then that is charge 1 itself times the electric field that is produced by charge 2. On the other hand, if we want to know the force that charge 2 experiences due to charge 1, um, we're going to uh, write that as the force that charge 1 um, applies to charge 2. That is going to be the result of the charge 2 itself times the electric field at the location of charge 2, which is E1. Um, so this looks kind of suggestive in that this is the force of 2 on 1 and this is the force of 1 on 2, right? So they seem like they should be third law pairs and it turns out that they are, right? But in general what we're saying is that the force that a particular charge experiences, a test charge, due to all external charges, is that test charge multiplied by the external electric fields associated with all other charges that are not the test charge. So once you have this description of uh, the force that a test charge experiences due to all external uh, electric fields, all of the other stuff that you know from mechanics actually applies. This idea of Newton's third law pairs, free body diagrams, superposition, all that stuff still holds when you think about um, what's going on with a particular kind of test charge. So let's explore that just for a moment because the idea that um, a test charge would feel some sort of net force, so let's say there's a, there's a bunch of external charges and they apply force to a single test charge, right? That would be exactly this description, which is Q test times E external. Now, those external forces or external fields might be due to a lot of different charges that live around Q test. That is that the external field is a result of some field due to charge 1, some field due to charge 2, some field due to charge 3, and so on. Right? So this multiplica multiplication is actually distributable. Right? So what we can say is that the force um, that the external charges apply to the test charge is actually equal to Q test times E1 plus Q test times E2 plus Q test times E3 and so on. Right? Now each of those looks exactly like this form or looks exactly like this form meaning that in fact each of these um, products is the force that the test charge experiences due to each external charge. So in fact what we're saying is that the force that um, the external charges apply to the test charge is a result of the force of the first charge on the test charge plus the force of the second charge on the test charge plus the force of the third charge on the test charge and so on. They all have the same form, right? So this idea of superposition of the electric field can actually be thought of in terms of superposition of forces, which you already have some experience with, this idea of pushes and pulls add up together, right? So 
Um, these two are sort of deeply connected in that way, um, which allows us to actually use the electric field um, much more easily. We can just add up electric fields without worrying about whether there's chest charges around or, or not. Um, so what we're saying is essentially, in this case, that the net field, that is this external, uh, uh, the field that the test charge uh, feels due to external charges, is really just the sum of all the individual forces, right? This is how we described it in mechanics, right? So all of the tools that we have can be applied to this, um, the momentum principles, superposition, third law pairs, free body diagrams, so forth, it all still works, right? And we've described it in a fully vectoral way so that we can actually use it to predict the direction and the magnitude of these forces. Now, one thing I want to mention is something that you might have seen in other courses, um, perhaps your chemistry course or maybe some other physics course that you've taken, which is often that people will write down that the force between two charges is something like 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 over r squared. That's a slightly problematic description because this tells you about the magnitude of the force between them, but they don't really share it in that sense. One of them is pushed one way and one is pushed the other way. Right? So the full formal description is really that the force on a charge could be written um, like this where you've included the unit vector that tells you about the direction. Now the problem here is that you actually need to know which charge you're actually trying to determine the force on because this unit vector is different for each charge. So for example, if I have these two charges here, Q1 and Q2, um, I know that they're going to be pushed apart, right? So the force that actually acts on Q1 due to 2, that is the force that 2 applies on 1, points to the left, whereas the force that 1 applies on 2 points to the right. And that's because this unit vector is different for each of these forces. One of them points to the right and one points to the left. Um, so when we're describing it in terms of just the magnitude, it's a very simple description because they both share that same separation distance. The problem is, is that in one case, the separation vector points that way. And in the other case, the separation vector points the other way because we are treating one as the source charge versus the other. So uh, in terms of thinking about how we actually go about doing these calculations, the structure of this should start from the description of the electric field due to one charge. And then we calculate the force by multiplying by the electric field. Then we're being very explicit about what we're treating as source charges and what we're treating as test charges. Um, so what these notes were meant to do, or what this video was meant to do, was to sort of walk through a little bit of how we calculate the electric force, how it's related to superposition, and to point out um, a little bit of a problem with a sloppier description of the electric force that you might have seen in chemistry or other physics courses. Um, so we're going to work a lot with this idea of the field, and then from that we'll derive the